My name is Mary, and I'm an addict. But don't worry, I'm in recovery, not gonna steal your stuff. <laughs> As an addict, there are big chunks of my past that are super fuzzy, or that I simply don't remember. But see, that was kind of the point. I couldn't handle life the way that everyone else seemed to handle life. It was too intense for me. Or maybe I'm just too sensitive. Regardless, when faced with any sort of emotion, good, bad, stressful, sorrow, love, any, I couldn't handle it. So I had to escape. And that's what addiction is. It's escapism taken to the extreme. So when first brainstorming about this little exercise, I had planned on telling you all the story of my last drunk when I assaulted someone with a salsa jar. <laughs> but then I thought, maybe that's not super relatable to the general public, <laughs> for good reason, yeah. So I'll just save that one for the after party. On occasion, upon learning I'm an addict, someone will ask me, what's your drug of choice? The answer is simple. What do you got? You see, in my active addiction, I would take anything I could get my hands on to take the edge off and give me a false, though comforting, sense of security. Uppers, downers, alcohol, street drugs, food, men, exercise, clothes. Whatever I think will distract me from the way that I'm feeling, I'm game to try. And that absolutely, 100%, includes good feelings, too. I can't handle good, just like I can't handle bad. And it may actually be worse. Good stuff is scary. Good stuff can be ripped away. Good stuff is a tease. So when too much good comes into my life, I have a tendency to freak out. And yes, I know that doesn't make any sense, but not everything in life does. Shortly after I got sober from drugs and alcohol, I began dating an amazing man. Today, I'm lucky enough to be able to call him my husband, but at the time, he was just my super hot, 10 years younger than me, boyfriend. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, early sobriety is a lot like trying to get over any other sickness. It's not an immediate stop using and suddenly you're cured type of thing. There is definitely a recuperation period. Kind of like if you've had the stomach flu for the past 15 years, it's probably gonna take at least a long weekend before you feel like eating chili cheese dogs and going on the tilt-a-whirl again. That's what early sobriety's like. It's a healing time. And, at least for me, it took a while before I could get my strength back up to a point where I could manage my emotions in any sort of reasonable way. Now, obviously, when dealing with major addiction, the goal is to cut out the most harmful and volatile components first, and then you can work your way through the less dangerous ones. So drugs, alcohol, and self-harm were the first to go, leaving me with a nice little menagerie of lesser, though still totally necessary, evils. Disordered eating actually popped up big time for me during this period. That's a pretty broad description, I know, but it's a pretty broad problem. I'll just say, I was desperately trying to control my intake, was unable to do so, and would feel extreme guilt and shame when I failed. So, basically the exact same cycle as any addiction. One day, I was home alone in the house that I shared with my then boyfriend, and I decided, very innocently, that I wanted to have a small bowl of ice cream as a treat to kind of reward myself and to prove that I could have a small bowl of ice cream alone in the middle of the afternoon and that there was nothing wrong with that. And that may be true 
for others. But for me, at that early stage of my recovery, it was likely going to be impossible. Why? Because ice cream makes me feel good. So I will use it until I feel horrible. What happened is I had a single, small, socially acceptable bowl of ice cream. But then I wanted another. And hey, I mean, that's still normal, right? I mean, doesn't anyone that has a little bit of ice cream actually kind of wish they had more than just a little? So I had another. And another. And then I just stopped messing around with the bowl altogether and went straight to town. <laughs> Before I knew what had happened, I had eaten almost the entire half gallon. But then the shame and fear set in. And I knew my super cute boyfriend was going to come home and see that I had eaten all of the ice cream and would probably break up with me because I was gross and didn't know how to share. <laughs> so I did what anyone would do in that situation. First, I consciously said, screw it, the damage is done, and polished off the rest of the carton. <laughs> then I put the empty carton in a plastic bag, got in the car, drove to the store, threw it away, went inside and purchased the exact same brand and flavor of ice cream, drove back home, and ate exactly one small bowl out of the new carton <laughs> to appear normal. And I felt better, but not really. My addiction felt secure, so that's a good thing. But I've just eaten an entire half gallon of ice cream, and I feel really gross about it. And shockingly, I also have a pretty bad stomach ache. Now, the plan was to not even say anything at all when my boyfriend got home because it is so totally normal to have a small bowl of ice cream alone in the middle of the afternoon. And if you look at the carton in the freezer, it is very clear that that is all I had. But for some reason when he got home, I couldn't lie to him, not even through omission, which I'll tell you is a testament to him, not me, because I have lied to a bunch of people in my life to cover my addiction and not felt bad about it in the slightest. So when he walked in the front door and said, hi, how was your day? The very first words out of my mouth were, there's a carton of ice cream in the freezer, but it's not the same carton of ice cream that was in there before. <laughs> it was a little awkward. Um, <laughs> So after I told him everything, probably in way more detail than was really necessary, especially since I'm trying to stem the appearance of crazy here, all he said was, I'm sorry you felt like you needed to do that. And it hit me, though certainly not for the last time. Who it was, I was really hurting.